In this video, I'm usually a man of structure, which I think everybody pretty much knows by now. I like to know exactly what I'm going to be doing, even before I start the race. I did as I usually do in this one, but then in a moment of madness, I diverted from the plan, which led me into a world of pain. Hey guys, Eri is here and welcome along to another video. If this is your first time here and you like watching all sorts of sim racing related stuff, then subscribe now and click the bell icon as well so you get notified of every video I upload and you don't miss a thing. So as always, you join me here for some pre-race practice. I did 10 laps of practice here, which I was reasonably happy with if I'm honest, using the notes that I have made. If you haven't seen how I do that by the way, go check out my St. Crew video where I show you how I do what I do and using TRL Lightning's Ghost which isn't the greatest for morale I must be honest but it's good to understand the best lines to use and following him I managed to attain a 1 minute 43.238 and whilst that was almost 2 full seconds off his time he was even quicker than usual around here he walked the top split as well so to give some other context at the time that I set the lap I was 6 tenths off key and 3 tenths off Dave Perel, which I was very happy with, as I mentioned earlier, and I took this time into the race. Moving on to quali then, I got out about halfway through the pack this time, usually I'm pretty much last each time I try and exit the pits. This is again a 5 minute qualification session, which is going to give time for us to do 3 laps here. Lap 1 is going to consist of pretty much fuel saving, and then coming in for some new boots. Lap two is gonna consist of more fuel saving, but making sure we get round in time for the final lap, lap number three, which will be my hot lap, and I'm gonna go for it. So I come across the line here to start my hot lap with about 10 seconds to go. So I timed it up reasonably well there. I'm also in the slipstream of the Nissan GTR up in front, as you can see, which is also a good thing, as I'll be benefiting from the tow. The lap went okay, it could have been a little bit better. I was trying to balance pushing hard to get a good lap in, but not too hard that I get a penalty, which is easy to do here at Catalonia. This is the danger with following the strategy of the top guys. It's high reward, but it's also very high risk. But I managed to get round without a penalty and come across the line with a 1 minute 45.240. 1.2 seconds off pole, not horrendous by any means, but it will have us starting down in 15th, for this one. So having spared you the FIA intro, we're here in the race. Today's Ginsters inspired livery is brought to you by long term subscriber and livery provider Rico Suavius. Thank you for this one mate. If you don't know who Ginsters are, in the UK there are a company that make things you eat when you are very very hungry and there are no other options such as sausage rolls, pasties, slices and that sort of thing. You would never actually buy one on your weekly shop, well I wouldn't anyway, but when you're stuck in a petrol station or a service station on a long trip, they are absolutely what you need. But anyway, enough about Ginsters and back to the race. You may have seen that we've actually started this race in 14th rather than 15th, and that is because someone left the lobby before it even began, so we've already gained a place from where we have started, which is a pretty good thing. So the race today, is the next round of the FIA Manufacturers Cup. We are with our favorite manufacturer for this season if you don't already know this. And for those that don't know, that manufacturer is Lexus. And I say I've come home quite a lot because it's a brand that I really enjoy driving with and have used for many a FIA season. We're here at the Circuit de Catalunya in Spain for a race length of 14 laps here. And Polyphony are keeping us on our toes here by changing up the tyre availability for this one. We are allowed to use any type of tyre that we want in this one, but we must use the hards. And if you don't, you'll be slapped with a 20 second penalty at the end. So if you don't know why you're getting that, that is exactly why. I have fallen foul of it myself before, as I have documented here on the channel. So make sure you check the race regulations guys before each FIA race or any race in general to be honest because you never know if there is a tyre regulation or a tyre requirement for the race. I haven't mentioned fuel as there is no need to take on fuel here but with that in mind I'm going to go for the three stopper 
Yes, you heard me, three stopper. As we are towards the back of the pack here, we're going to get the hards out of the way first. The reason behind that is, I don't want to be on the quicker compound and be stuck in traffic. The plan is that we are going to come in at the end of lap number two, and then do three stints of four laps on the softs. Some of the top guys that I've seen were going to two on the hard and then six and six on the softs, meaning one less pit stop having to be made. But I didn't feel comfortable with that, so I said to myself, I'm gonna go with hard, then soft, then soft, then soft. Yes, three stops, which sounds ridiculous over a 14 lap race, as I mentioned earlier, but with the tire wear multiplier so high and the pit lane reasonably short here, it was a viable option for me. Finally, I'm car number 19 in this one. So I am pretty much the driver with the lowest driver rating in this field. Only one driver has less driver rating points than me. So anything above 19th, or last now as it shows because the driver left earlier, will be a victory for me here. So moving slightly ahead here, as per the strategy, we come in at the end of lap number two. And as we come out, we have so far matched the car in front strategy wise. He started on the hards, just like us, and now we are both out onto the softs. You can also see a couple of others around us did exactly the same. I tried to stay in the white lines there as I came out the pits because I'm a gentleman and we're going to try and stay with this guy up ahead as we get the next stint underway. So as a reminder, we are now planning to go for the next four laps until the end of lap number six on these soft tires. And as we come into the final sector here on lap number three, you can see the Ferrari up in front is struggling big time on its tires. This is a good indicator of why the three stopper is going to be a good option for us here. And I'm keen to get the move done as I don't want to get held up. I also want to make this quick rather than getting into a battle, which is going to eat up my tyres, which I really don't want to happen here. You can see here as we move on a little further down the lap how much these guys up ahead are now struggling. As we come down to the big braking zone here at the end of the straight, the GTR goes for a move and I'm going to follow him through as 15th doesn't shut the door in time, taking the position. It was probably a wise move by him to be honest, it is clear we are on different strategies and it would just hold us both up if we were to get into a battle. I am a big fan of bigger picture thinking and racecraft so well done that man. Moving ahead here to lap number 6, we are starting to catch those who are longing out the softs for a full 6 laps here. As we come into turn number 5, I find myself on the outside but then cut back underneath and use my comparatively better tyre wear to make the move provoking us up to 12th now. So as I mentioned earlier that my strategy was going to be a 3 stopper, I was circulating quite happily at this point, cutting my way through the pack following the Frenchman in the GTR up ahead. And because of the tyres feeling quite good at this point, I started to think about things in my head, which is always very, very dangerous. I was thinking to myself, my tyres feel okay? I just made a move on the driver for that position back there, and the other guys around us are on the same strategy as me, or at least had been to this point. I was happy with my pace too, following the practice I had as I came out of the final corner here where I should have peeled off into the pits I saw the Nissan didn't go in and I stayed out. This was due to be my in-lap, no actually let me rephrase that it should have been my in-lap. And to reference Jurassic Park I was about to feel the pain of going into the long grass rather than just sticking to the path. Coming out of turn number 5 here is where I got the first sense that I had messed up. I got understeer on the entrance and a boatload of oversteer on the exit there so things had already started to go wrong. But as I entered the chicane, I rode the sausage just a little bit too hard and paid the price. Round I went. Wearing out the tyres even more as I hit the throttle to try and end up facing the right way. I should have just come in at that point but I didn't do that either. I felt I had committed to the alternate strategy here and I was too stubborn in the moment to make the change. I then spent the next lap doing everything I could to keep this thing in a straight line and on the track, which is where the wheel cam really comes into its own. Usually you just see what it took to keep this thing in a straight line and on the black stuff by the little red dot above the rev bar, but here you can see everything that I needed to do to prevent another spin as my tyres were pretty much completely worn out. But finally though, I got to the end of the lap, 
to get my new boots on. What an absolute relief. But sadly, due to my change in strategy, I was going to have to do it all over again. And then, as I come out of the pits to add insult to injury, my computer then ran out of storage. I had forgotten to remove some old footage off the computer and I ran out so we've got the rest of the footage directly from the PlayStation. It isn't great but it will do so apologies for the quality there but let's get back to the race. So the eagle eyed amongst you will have seen that on my adventure back to the pits on the last lap I got myself a penalty which I'm going to serve here and as I look back the main aim really is to look after these tyres, we'll try to look after them as best as I can and much much better than I did last time and try to avoid frankly coming last. We have five laps left here after this one so there is still a long way to go. We're going to move up to 17th though as the Gibram, Hello Gibram comes in there. So two spots above our door number remember which is 19 as I mentioned earlier. We're then going to move up to 16th here as the PRST or Priest or Prost, not sure what the name of that team is, but whatever the name is, that driver goes off track. We are then going to take another two places and move up to 14th as we cross the line to start lap number 11, thanks to those who are pitting. But if you excuse me, I'm going to go about my business now for the next few laps, following Momos' mate here around to try and save these tyres. We rejoin the action here on the final lap. I did exactly what I said I was going to do and there wasn't a great deal to show you to be honest. I'm still in 14th, following a different car as the guys have slotted in between myself and the GT Bocca driver who is now up ahead in 11th. This was a very difficult race for me and I have very much learnt my lesson of not changing the strategy once I settle in on one. If I had my time again, I would have done what I chose to do in the first place, but I'm not going to do that and I'm not going to do the race again guys, you know me, one and done. I wish GT Sport would make it one and done actually across the piece. Well actually saying that, I don't know what it's like to do five races in a row, maybe it's something I'd enjoy, maybe I'll do that one night, do a key style five races in a row, stream it and see how well I can do. Let me know in the comment section down below and let me know if you'd like me to do something special like that as a one-off five race FIA night. But anyway, whilst disappointing there is no time to dwell on it. The next iRacing special event is already upon us and coming at you live this Saturday 8th of February from lunchtime GMT for the 12 hours of Bathurst. It's going to be another monster of an event which I hope you will all join us on the channel for. As we come across the line here to take 14th, let's have a look at our driver rating. And we can see here following that result that I actually lost 500 points and we have dropped to 54,384 now. Still well within A+, plus though, so that is absolutely fine. We'll dust ourselves off and go again in the next round. As I've mentioned earlier, we've got no time to dwell on this because Bathurst is upon us. And for now guys, that is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already. We also now have merch too, so go check out the Teespring store below and go get yourself some of that if you want to support the channel that way. But thanks again so much for watching guys and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.